Okay, I am making some muscadine wine. Let's see if I can find one for you that ain't popped. Nice little muscadine. Some of them were bronze. Uh, it's a bronze scuppernong. Uh, what I'm doing is putting it on to uh, boil. You gotta be careful. Don't scorch it. Uh, a friend of mine told me if you scorch it, it's ruined. So I'm stirring. But what I'm doing, I did not squash them. I tried to. I'm stirring with ee, 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 ee. stirring with this, which is kind of breaking them up, cutting them in half. And then I've also got get out of there. You go back in. I have also got a tater masher. And it's doing a pretty good job of, of uh, mashing them up. So, so and if some of them don't get mashed up, I think it's all right. I hope the camera's not fogging up. I tried, uh, I tried this little jewel here. It's uh, some kind of juicer, squasher thing. That would have just taken forever. I've got 12 um, pounds. I put uh, had two, almost three of these full, uh, two and uh, three fourths anyway, something like that. So, try to walk you through the process. For right now, I'm just basically heating up. I, I, I you know, I may bring them to a boil. They've been close to a boil a while ago, but uh, I'm not going to uh, not going to cook them a lot because I don't want to scorch them. So, uh, I'm just going to try to take you through this real quick. Muscadine wine. And by the way, uh, I made some blackberry wine earlier this year, and uh, that is it. Uh, came out pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm not much of a drinker. Everybody said it was pretty, pretty strong. So uh, I put two packages of yeast in it because typically my wine has not been very strong, and uh, some people like it a little stout. But uh, as most of you know. Uh, from another video we uh, we named the wine for ourselves Alan and Sandra specialty wine ASS wine so this is blackberry wine we you call it black ass wine <laughs> my wife's gonna shoot me but that's what we call it but it uh, I don't know I like it and and I don't really like wine so uh, it's uh to me it didn't really taste all that uh, strong but uh, Everybody else has tasted it said it was. I, I put it in a venometer. Venometer. And uh, it, it said 5%, which is about what all of my stuff's been running. So I, I didn't think it was strong at all, but everybody says, oh my gosh, it's strong. I didn't, I didn't see it myself, but that's okay. I have actually got, had given to me a real show enough carboy. I've been using these water jugs. I did my blackberry wine now, I gotta clean it out. But uh, uh, I show enough carboy. So we're going uptown this time. Okay, I'm putting uh, 10 cups of sugar. Sugar in the uh, in some water, let it boil, get up, get up to temp so the sugar will dissolve. And you want to be looking at clear syrup when you get through. Everybody knows how to do this. Don't need to say much. About it. Okay, you you dissolve your yeast in uh, this particular packet says two ounces, or, or, two ounces of warm water, not hot, 104 to 109 degrees. Let it sit 15 minutes without stirring. Then stir well to suspend all the yeast. Now I use the Lauven 71B. Dash 1122 because I have found that it gives it such a wonderful bouquet and the the hit the the the, the oh yeah you know I use it because that's what I got <laughs> I bought a bunch of it on eBay or something so I think it's about a dollar a pack you know one of these days I'm going to experiment with just plain old bread yeast because I think yeast is yeast but that's just me anyway this is supposed to cook for about 15 minutes stir it up let it cook some more. And then when you put it in your stuff, and this is still the sugar uh, dissolving, it's pretty clear right now, uh, and the muscadines, 
when you put it in your water you don't want to kill the yeast so I'm gonna to have to once I put it in the carboy I'll put enough water in it to cool it down to about you know 104 to 109 degrees so the um, so it doesn't kill the yeast so. okay what I had to do I had a funnel here that I used for this other carboy because it's got a bigger uh, whatever you call that mouth this, uh, the glass carboy, the real thing, the ones you're supposed to use, has a smaller mouth. I did not have a funnel for it. So I had to use my old funnel, but it wouldn't go down in there. So what I did was just tape it around now. I'll cut that tape off in a minute. I'm also making some hooch because I had, man, I just think, now that's floating, but it's, uh, you know, it's a bunch of berries. There's probably uh, uh, six inches or so of muscadines. Uh... I had 12 pounds all together. That's got to be at least uh, 10 pounds. 11, 12, I hope. Anyway, that's a half gallon jar, uh, halfway full. Uh, that's just a quart jar, halfway full of the juice as well as muscadines. And I've got a lot of seeds in it because the seeds, um, you know, we're going to be, we're going to make some muscadines seed wine or something. Anyway, making a little hooch too. Uh, when you got down toward the bottom, the dregs, uh, lots of seeds, lots of seeds. So the last two things that I poured out did have a lot of seeds in it, but I don't think it's a big deal because there's a lot of seeds in there too. Uh, the stuff, yeast is cooking off, uh, won't be long. I've already put a little bit of cold water in here. I usually put a, try to get a thermometer down in there, but I think I'm just going to go by feel. Needs a little bit more cold water, still a little hot. And I'll pour it in there, and I'll put my little hooky dooky on top to bubble it, and uh, uh, I believe that's it. If you haven't seen uh, how to make what I call the hooch, uh, look at my video, the hooch, <laughs> or the hooch, the sequel. Okay, there's the carboy. Give it a little roll here so you can kind of see it. See it rolling around in there, and some people just use the juice. Uh, this is the Ironhead 41 method, and we use we, as <laughs> me and him, uh, use the whole fruit. And um, basically, when all the fruit sinks, he says it's ready. Uh, I usually, you know, will wait maybe a little longer than that. I need to put a little bit more water in my percolator. Some of it slid out. And then I'm going to put these here. Normally what I do is put those in an ice chest and pack them with uh, some potting soil, give it the uh, um, appearance of being buried, but because um, that's what Ironhead does. But I think I'm just going to leave it right here and just see, you just kind of watch it and see. Over here I do have, those are uh, some half gallon jugs of pear hooch that I did, uh, I think, on, on the sequel. Uh, when we uncorked some of those, my son-in-law, who is a wine snob, said they were really, really good. So, uh, and he said he was gonna come over and get those four. <laughs> and I told him, well, you can strain them off. But anyway, this will settle, and then when all of it sinks to the bottom, it's pretty much done, or if you got a percolator on it, or as Ironhead uses, and I, this is the first time I've used a percolator on it to do it right. Uh, because my other one, as I said, didn't. We had a smaller, had a larger neck, and the cork wouldn't fit right. But um, uh, if you don't have this, poke a hole in a condom, put a condom on it, and uh, hey, I just saw it bubble. Okay, good. But I do need to put a little bit more water. Here's the fill line, and the water's right there, so I need to come up. But anyway, that's the hooch, that's the wine, muscadine. I believe we go. Bye. All right, it's been 24 hours. And let's see what you're doing. I can't tell whether it's percolating or just real glad to see me. <laughs> uh, anyway, I had to revert to the iron head method here. Oops. Because it is percolating so much. And I have never had one that was really gurgling and bubbling this much. I mean, this one is is kicking. I want you to look at that. So, 
<laughs> it's definitely working. Uh, this morning, uh, this apparatus here was full and had kind of busted. You can see some residue. Uh, I had to take the airlock off because I saw last night that it was going to go up in that airlock and just foul it all out and everything. So I had to revert to the uh, old school method, which, you know, I kind of like better anyway. Punch a hole in the end of this. And uh, it is an airlock. And it also traps uh, your, oops, yikes, traps your goodies. So it is still leaking here. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got some issues. So uh, I've got to find out exactly where it's leaking and maybe even replace that airlock. Anyway, it is perking. Good gracious alive, the muscadines are perking. I'm telling you, I have never had one. And I have made several batches of this stuff. I have never had one that was perking like this. Look at that. Goodness. So, uh, it's going to be a while before we can, uh, we're going to uncork this little puppy. But when we do, I'll uh, let you know what it tastes like. Muscadine wine. This is going to be the end of this. We're gone.